have some interesting developments or the lack thereof with my catacetinae, which I would like to bring to your attention because I find them very interesting. Some things have never occurred like this in my collection before. And the first candidate we're going to address and talk about, and I hope I've taken enough footage while I talk that you can see what I'm on about. If not, the comments are there for a reason. Take advantage of them and type away on anything I don't circle back on for more clarification. Catacetum Jack of Diamonds is our first candidate. And well, clearly I am not going to be putting up with this in this position for another two or three years before actually repotting it. So I'm gonna take this orchid out and we're gonna resituate it into the pot nice and straight without too much fuss or fiddle. Now, let me, while I do this, talk about what went on. This orchid started a fantastic new growth, right on time, as anticipated, season permitting, etc. And everything was going on schedule, it was awesome. Then it started to show another nubbin and I'm like, I've never seen that happen before. This orchid does not bloom until winter, until the growth of the season has matured and is about to go dormant. Anyway, so watching that growth happen while my first growth was going well, huh, I was a happy bunny. And then enter the infinite wisdom of orchids. This orchid already registered that the growth that it was growing was going to die. And it was pushing out a second new growth to make sure that it has another growth during the season to secure its survival. <laughs> Incredible, huh? And promptly, this growth died. And I cannot tell you why. That's the first for me on the Catacetinae, that a growth just stops. Even it was growing great roots, everything was going according to plan, everything was on schedule, and still. So, yeah, even my commentary is off because I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing with the wire here, but, and I just cracked that root. Anyway, moving on staying brave. So the new growth that you see now, the second one for the season, is growing very, very nicely, thankfully. And it's also growing new roots. And guess what? The roots of the first growth stopped growing just because the whole growth died, which I also found very, very fascinating. I mean, they didn't even progress beyond anything after the first growth died off. So growth and roots of the catacetinae are super, super connected in how they behave and grow. So I hope that it wasn't too boring while I was focusing on getting that wire off. But you see, here are the roots from the first growth. And they've stopped growing. Now, mind you, I've cracked this one, but that was just now. And here are the roots from the second growth that are still trying to grow, but because the orchid is slowly but surely losing a lot of the energy. We still have enough in here to work with, but if I don't do something now, we won't have anything to work with. We're gonna set this orchid back or actually lose it completely. Right, I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm just gonna reposition the orchid in the pot. And then we'll go on to the next candidate. All right, we've gotten to this point. I like her position in the pot. And I am now, because the roots are long enough, gonna fill up the entire pot with leca, dry leca. But I'm still not at the point of watering. So we have plenty of energy still left for possibly the roots that we have in the pot to grow a little bit longer. So I'm still not gonna water this orchid. I am going to be watching the pseudobulbs very, very closely. I am okay with losing the back pseudobulb if that is a need. Better to have that go than, you know, lose the roots. So this orchid has been set back. It is a mystery to me why the growth failed. There was no water, there was no direct sun, it was in bright shade, it had enough of a breeze, there were no pests, and you will see why I can say that with conviction, because when I show you the final candidates of today, you will see a marked difference that the leaves on this orchid are absolutely fine. 
Anyway, she is going to go back into the place that she has been all this time while we waited. Let's have a look at my Signoche's Jumbo Mickey. Very happy to say that the biggest fandangle, the biggest faff is out of the way with repositioning the Jack of Diamonds. And here is Signoche's Jumbo Mickey, a catacetone that I completely destroyed, almost. I took away its former beautiful bulb luscious glory and put it into this state. And the reason I'm talking singular, because it used to all be in one pot and then, well, I'll link the videos in the description if you want to see whatever happened, happened. But I decided then to try the PET method as per Stephen Van Camp and Lewis's recommendation. And I wanted to give it a go because you see, I'm mainly inorganic and lecker and self-watering and this was fun and I had the media. Anywho, I managed to rescue two bulbs out of something that was probably nine bulbs. And you can see that the one that is growing the new growth here is very, very shriveled. And then in the B-roll footage, you will see that, <laughs> well, we don't have roots going where they're supposed to go. The same with the second one. Everything is happening the way a rescue catacetone is, or according to my current status quo, these are now back to seedling status. And well, hey, <laughs> let me tell you, it is dicey. If any of these two new growths on these pieces do not make it, Jumbo Mickey is history. And we don't want to get to that point. And the roots are nowhere near down the length they're supposed to be. I do have roots, but they have been curling themselves either around one of the bulbs or they are just not long enough to go where they're supposed to go. Granted, my containers are also rather large, but what I am I'm going to do now is just give a little trickle of water to the sphagnum moss to see if we cannot maybe maybe help these little bulbs <clears throat> to activate their roots it is dangerous it is dangerous because they are not where they're supposed to be so it's not like I'm trying to water a catacetone that is ready to be watered. I am just dampening the sphagnum moss and I am relying on the wicking efficacy of the sphagnum moss to distribute the water around where it should be. And hopefully I am not going to destroy the little teeny tiny roots that I do have. But if I don't do this, then Jumbo Mickey will be history COC. Now, let's get back to the pests because I am gonna get to that point. Check this out. Both of the foliages, both leaves are looking fabulous. Everything is coolio. These two pieces live right next to the Jack of Diamonds on the glass shelf in bright shade, hoping that they will come back to life. And you saw the minimal, minimal amount of water I put in there. Well, I'm just gonna monitor and see what happens from here on in. But that sphagnum moss needs to stay damp from now on. Damp, not wet. Just so that maybe I can activate the roots. Maybe. No guarantees at this point either. But check out the foliage. It's doing okay. Because our last candidates of the day. Oh, yikes. Told ya. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is happening here? Right. <laughs> This is my Signoches Lodigesii, and here I have a tiny, tiny little piece of Caracetum albovirensis from the orchid room. She propagated a back bulb, got it to grow a new growth, sent it to me, and well, the shame, the shame. In two years, this is what I have to show for. I did manage to grow a little bulb in the last year of 2021, and I was hoping from there we could move forward, and we have been. We've been trying. I had trips. Look at that. These two, even, they live together on the bottom shelf indoors where they get bright shade, but not anywhere near the other two. So you can see that the foliage on the other two or the decline of the other growth from my Jack of Diamonds had nothing to do with thrips. These two live next to each other and yeah. Now, how do I know it's thrips? Let me show you. If I can show that, dead bodies. I have dead bodies because since I treated with garlic alcohol after I noticed that something was happening and it wasn't good, I left some dead bodies behind or as they crawled up and out of their hiding places, they showed themselves and well, I was wiping my finger earlier today. I should have done that on camera and quite a few little bodies came off and then I stopped wiping. And well, I don't have anything to show you except 
well, <laughs> the damage. Now, what's going on here? What is the future? The growing point of the Lodigesii is not affected, but clearly there is absolutely nothing there to photosynthesize. I still have the opportunity for the growing point to grow a new leaf. Whether it's good enough, I don't know. And I have obviously got it in a semi-hydro setup system. So there are viable roots in the pot. We can work with that. This was the bulb that I grew in 2021. Yeah, we were hoping for something really cool to happen in 2022. Depending from the perspective you're looking at, something cool did happen, but it, <clears throat> not what I expected. Anyway, Lodidesii should be okay because I have energy in the back. My little albovirons here, however, oh boy, oh boy. There is no growing point that I can see in the leaf joint. I am not entirely sure whether this one's going to make it, but the little pseudobulb in the back is not desiccating and that is important. If there is enough energy left in this little pseudobulb, it may throw out another new growth next year. But if I then don't get it right, that is going to make it history and I would really like to avoid that. So you can see that from my collection, I have my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl doing fabulously as expected. My Jack of Diamonds, however, shocker, learning something new. If I get to understand what actually went wrong, I will definitely let you know in future updates. And of course, I will keep you updated on the progress of my Jumbo Mickey, even if the progress means it declines because you know it can go either way for those so i do not want to bring all of them together in a group photo to say thank you so much for watching because clearly if there's still something loitering around on these two they are not to migrate to the other ones because the other ones have never been that close to these two <laughs> they have been misted with garlic alcohol prior to filming <laughs> i did my protection now i just hope that anything loitering in here is not going over there <laughs> If this was of interest, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button or if it was like, oh yeah, meh, bad orchids, hit the dislike button. I really appreciate either way the fact that you have been here. Thank you for your time. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.